Hey everybody, welcome to Contra Talk. My name is Richard Henry, and we've got another episode for you right now with a great guest. He is a businessman. He's owned a number of different businesses, small-time business owner, uh, but he makes money as a tool uh, to also be able to bless others as well. He's a Christian. He's a husband and a father of two boys who he's also passed that knowledge on, and they've had a number of businesses, even though they're both uh, under 20 years old. They've uh, make money for the glory of God, use it for their own means, as well as blessing other people using it as a tool. And so this is a really good conversation. I hope it will be helpful to kind of demystify some things and, and uh, help someone along the way. All right. Hope you enjoy it. My guest today is Joseph Huss. He's a husband and a father. He's a businessman. We actually met uh, at the Conservative Baptist Network conference back in April. He was down in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, and he had a booth there with one of his companies. He's owned, he owns a couple companies. And we're going to be talking about business today, Christian entrepreneurship, and just being uh, in this world, but working and serving Christ. How you doing today, Joe? Welcome. I'm to the doing show. great. I'm doing great, Richard. Thank you so much for having me on the show. It was a, such a pleasure to meet you back in, uh, I think you said it was April. It seems like so it long ago. Late but April, was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was a pleasure, pleasure to meet you down there and just to uh, fellowship with you, just right right out in front of our, our one of our coffee booths. So that was great. I know. I, I was there like half the time. There was other stuff going on. So Yeah, um, that's that okay. Cool. Uh, well, yeah, tell, us a little bit of, tell us a little bit, a little bit about yourself, <laughs> uh, your wife. Sure. Your, you got yeah, two sons, is that right? They were working the booth with yeah. you guys? Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about that. How you came to Christ and and kind of your your desire to, you know, be a faithful, good businessman in this world for Christ. Yeah, yeah. So I'll try to keep the the story as short as I can and as concise as I can. But I got saved when I was about 17, 18 years old, and uh, you know, a day I'll never uh, never forget. Just appreciated that I wasn't serving the Lord right after that. Unfortunately, I went to school for criminal justice for a few years. Felt like that was what God had had for me personally. And uh, throughout that time, the Lord just really changed, you know, my heart from kind of criminal justice and and, and that kind of uh, public service to ministry. And, you know, to be honest with you, Richard, I, I didn't really want to be a pastor. I just wanted to get closer to God. And that really is my testimony. I had no aspiration at all to be a pastor or a missionary or a church worker. I want to be involved in ministry, but just I had no real um specific and thing goal in mind in terms of my vocation i just said hey man i just want to get closer to god i love the lord and and how do i how, how can i do that in kind of a, a larger way and you know bible college is what i did so i went to bible college worked at uh, a couple different churches uh, one assistant pastor uh two senior pastors uh, two churches where I was a senior pastor. So I, I guess aggregately, it was probably about 15 years total, maybe a little bit less. But towards the end of, of uh, I want to say it was 2020, I just said to my wife and some others, and and uh, some things kind of came up in the ministry. Uh, and I said, you know what? I just, I think, I, I think I'm done, you know? And, uh, but God had always impressed on me. Over the years, I, I probably had, uh, you know, three, four businesses that I had started and uh, run, sold even, and with my family. And I said, you know, I, I really had this, I had this heart probably four years to, to actually resigning the ministry about how can, there's got to be a way to be able to support ministry in, in financially. You know, we, we had people come into our ministry and in a hundred dollars a week was really life changing. I mean, I know it sounds really pathetic, but in a small ministry, a hundred bucks a week is, I mean, that's $5,200 a year. I mean, that's, that does, that, that, that pays some bills. And there'd be people who would come in who would give me $150 a week in the ministry. And that was just, again, blew my mind and $200 a week. And we had people even come in and even given, you know, $250 a week. And it's just yeah, it's crazy. Wow. And, and I, I knew what it would felt like to me. And as a young pastor, I just said, uh, man, there's a way that we can actually do some, something significant mm -hmm. and, and we, we can, you know, financially. And I, I looked to my wife one night, I was scrolling Facebook and I just said, we could do anything. We could do, we could do anything under the sun. I'm a, you know, I've got this in me. Yeah. I said, we could, we could start a coffee company. I said, there's a coffee shop down the street. does a million a year. I said, we could, we could start a coffee company and literally be, be generous with literally every, every cup, every, every cup 
every cup of Joe, I said, it would be, it would be a generous cup of Joe. It'd be a generous Joe. It'd be a, it could be generous Joe's. And just, <laughs> right. I'm like, that's it. So that was yeah. about four at this time, maybe, maybe almost five years ago. Mm-hmm. And so that was kind of the, the, the starting point, kind of the launching pad for, for more business related activities. But the coffee was really just a way that uh, it's so ubiquitous and uh, it's a, you know, $180 billion year industry. And I thought, man, I, wow. if I could just have a, a fraction of that to give away to help ministries and ministry related workers, et cetera, et cetera, I think that would be fun. Yeah. Cause I know what it felt like to me, you know, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And I was the recipient of many gifts. And I thought, man, if I feel this good, I just want to be the one with a company that is able to kind of the, the underwriter or the benefit, you know, the benefactor and, yeah. and, and got, and, and that's kind of where it, that started uh, for the coffee company. So we've got several other companies that we own at this point in time. We we're adding more companies uh, underneath growth ventures and yeah, we're just having a blast and family owned, you know, I'm a family owned. My kids uh, work with me. My wife works with me and uh, we got a great team of people, dozens of people that work with us. And it's just, it's really, we're just, you know, living the proverbial dream. No, that's good. Um, I love, I love uh, Luke 16, where Christ says, you know, if you're faithful in little, you're going to be faithful in much. And, and um, you know, the course, the parable of the talents. And there's a lot of things. Money is one of those. I don't know. There's <laughs> the more I pay attention and study. And I mean, I don't say I'm a history guy, but that's just, I, again, I appreciate history, trying to understand what's going on, both in recent history and, and far back. And you look at the last hundred years with a plenary of things within the church and the culture. And there's just been a lot of failure, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. And one of those things is even with money. And you think, well, you just want to make money for money's sake, or you just want to be greedy, or you just want to be this, or, you know, money is the root of all evil. And it's like, well, yeah. re- money is a root of all kinds of evil. You know, so there's actually some qualifiers in there uh, that are actually in the text that aren't always in the English. And so we kind of have these assumptions that all of a sudden, money's bad. And we'll get to your companies in a moment. We'll pull up a couple of the websites. But um, you said something in person uh, months ago when we met that, you know, what problem in my life couldn't be solved by money? Now you say, you know, besides spiritual, of course. And I think a lot of people hear that and they instantly run to, ah, oh, you're Joel Osteen. Ah, oh, you're just this. Oh, your health, wealth, prosperity, Creflo Dollar, Benny Hinn. Ah, oh, you're just, you know, Kenneth Copeland. And people freak out as if I and you don't have families to support and feed mortgage yeah. a cell phone i'm on a computer right now i'm paying for my internet uh yeah. i just drank some coffee that i purchased at the grocery store a couple of days ago with water that comes through my pipes that i then get charged by my city to the That's filter right. and i mean <laughs> there's just i mean i have shoes on and i mean all clothes like yeah. all these things we need money and money is just this tool like anything yeah. else like a hammer right. for example uh yeah. you know it can be used for great good or great uh gruesome harm and so why don't you flesh out that kind of statement that you said, yeah. uh, you yeah. know, there, what problem isn't, is there that can't be solved with more money? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, first of all, you know, Solomon said money answereth all things. Okay. And, uh, th- so three weeks ago I was heading back from, I was in San Francisco, San Jose area and had to, uh, I bumped up my, my schedule by a day, uh, to be quite honest. I don't know if you knew this or not, if you followed me on Facebook at all, but, um, I had an, had a acute appendicitis. Oh, and I had to have an emergency appendectomy. And uh, I should I, I honestly, by, by my estimation, I should have died in Wyoming because I was traveling back and my stop, my, my, my point of reference was like I was going to stop at a, at a rest area in Wyoming. And, and uh, by God's good grace, I bumped up the schedule. I walked in the door Wednesday night right before church. And within an hour and a half, I mean, I was in the ER and, and that whole thing. Wow. Here's what I'm here's what I'm saying. I got that bill the other day. And uh, by God's grace, I have insurance, but it was uh, almost forty thousand oh, dollars for yeah. a fifteen-minute procedure. Um, a lot of things are answered with money. We, we can't. I mean, I can't remember who it was that said who, who asked the question: How much ministry can be done with a hundred dollars? And to mm-hmm. which the re- re- reply was: hundred dollars worth. Now we know that when little is much, God is in it, and God is a multiplier. I get that. I'm not taking out of. I, I don't want to. I don't want to to minimize God's ability to to multiply loaves and fishes and and he does that and he does that okay i'm not at all minimizing that but god has given us the tools he's given us the the work the work ethic 
the um, the the resources from that to to be able to supply the needs for that money as a resource to, to fulfill the needs of others. Mm-hmm. And God uses people. Now he, he doesn't need us. He doesn't need us. He could just boom. If, if if we don't if we don't speak the rocks will cry out, right? I mean we know that. Right. God God just chooses to use us. He chooses to use the systems that He's created to fulfill some of those. He, he doesn't need doctors, mm-hmm. but he chooses to use doctors, right? And so I I I think when I look at I look at the, the use of money. Someone will ask me, says, "Say, was is it, is it just about the money?" And I'm, yeah. I mean, right right now in my life, it, it, it really yeah. is. And I and I say, let me ask you: Do you go to work? Uh, do you go to work on Monday? Well, yeah. Why? Well, because I have to. And I say, and why? Yeah. And they say, well, because for the paycheck. And I said, so is it all about the money? <laughs> yeah. The answer is the answer is. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Yes. Most people wouldn't do their job if it was for free, right? I mean, yeah, it's it just is the reality the of it. It is about yeah. that. So for us, <laughs> so mul- you turn know, it on its head. Well, it's true though. I mean, and so for us, we, we, we look at this as a as as a as a necessity. Mm-hmm. But we also look at God as the multiplier of that of that of that tool and say, hey, if we could hire Christian workers, if we can hire uh, people who can help multiply that and then give it to people who then multiply the money on the far end of it, uh, you know, on the back end of it, then it's just this, it has this universal multiplier of God and and using Christian workers. And and, yeah. and I think we're, we're it's it's really high time that we uh that we use, we, that we, that we try to be creative in our methods. How can we be creative in our methods where that we can somehow uh, expand God's kingdom using God's workers in within God's purpose and framework. Uh, and then, and then continue just to give. And it's a multiplier. God does that, you know, yeah. God does that. No, that's, that's really good. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it is all about the money. <laughs> I mean, and, and, and obviously, <laughs> you know, People can take that in ten different ways, but Absolutely. and they do, and they do. By the way, they do. Right. They take it and they twist it, and they make they make people who are trying to supply the resources for others. They make those people look like the bad guy because they're out there. I'm I'm not trying to get trying to get rich. The Bible says, yeah. "Labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom." It's not about getting rich. Is it about the money? Yes, because money's the tool we use to do God's work. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and from the basic, you know, mom staying home, changing diapers, making meals, doing regular stuff where the husband generally historically, right, leaves and does the thing, whether that's in the field or the shop or an hour away or across the country like you sometimes, that this is this is how God set up. Now, again, we the culture chafes against that. You know, what, are you saying women, you know, should be in the house? Well, that's how God designs it. But that means then men shouldn't be. <laughs> and if there's too much, you know, togetherness in the house, you know, men, I mean, there's my wife and I just us off the cuff. We re- we have a little booklet thing. And it's like, you know, thoughts for young men and women or something like that. And it's like a hundred years old. And so, so much of the wisdom is still yeah. prescient. And yet it talks about, you know, the husband having, you know, don't just fiddle around, don't wander, don't be in your wife's way has a more poetic way of writing, of course. But it's one of those like, yeah. I'm on vacation from the church I pastor. I haven't been, I haven't preached last week or I won't be preaching this Sunday, but <clears throat> it's nice. But at the same time, I have to be busy. I'm doing this right now. I got, I'm outside working on the yard yesterday. And when I'm around too much, this is my wife's domain. I actually call her, you know, the VP of operations in the sense that she's, yeah. she's the day to day. I'm big picture CEO. She's the VP of operations, both vital, both important, both made That's in right. God's image, but she yeah. has a role and I have a role. And something that even as Christians, I would implore everyone listening to my voice and yours, this is how God has made it. Don't chafe against that. Don't believe second wave feminism. And, you know, now we're into the way, four, fourth wave of, you know, what is a woman? We don't even know. Uh, men can be better yeah, women right. than women, you know. And so it's like all that, <laughs> yeah, right. all that with money. Okay, so how do we do yeah. this? Because Nike, Apple, Microsoft, UPS, FedEx, all these massive conglomerate companies, they, they have the money they do these things and we just think they're neutral i think that's the thing this myth of neutrality we mm. think that's well great. you know apple apple's just a neutral company target sure target pushes transgenderism sure they had men in their uh, bathrooms and changing rooms five six years ago sure they were supporting lgbt stuff and gay marriage 10 12 years ago but uh you know it's just target it's just a thing and it's like what if you bought products from a christian company that was a little bit yeah, more right. maybe but the quality's better and they're not supporting companies who hate you 
right? And we see this with more and more cancel culture, even if they're not Christians, they're just conservative. And anyway, so um, let's pull up a couple of your websites here. Um, tell us about this one first, the Growth Reading Center. What, what is Growth Reading Center? Yeah, so Growth Reading Center is a dyslexia-specific online program. And okay. so we hire uh, tutors really all across the country, uh, most of them Bible college students, Christian workers, uh, pastors' wives. Uh, we've got people who are uh, professors and teachers at Bible colleges. It's, it's, it's our way of helping, helping Christian workers. So we pay them well. We start everybody at a, at a, at a great uh, I, I believe it's, it's, it's way above, um, you know, almost twice as much as the, uh, you know, standard, I guess, but, you know, we, we, we pay the tutors. Well, mm-hmm. we pay, um, we pay all of our folks. Well, we give great, there's great hours and there are, um, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, I don't want to say it's flexible, but it's flexible for a Bible college student coming in making 20, 25 bucks an hour when they could be at, you know, this grocery store making 11. I think we're, we're trying to be a blessing. Someone did it for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it, it, it's interesting, Richard, when, when I went to Bible college and I thank the Lord for, for, uh, for his goodness and his provision throughout Bible college, I had people in my life that, that they overpaid me. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they paid me to work on projects that they made no money on. And so it was, people were just gratuitous yeah. to, to, to almost to a fault. And, uh, we just, uh, I want to reciprocate that. You know what I mean? Like no, I did it for me, I want to do it for others on a massive scale. So this is a program. We help kids with dyslexia learn how to read. We're actually piloting other programs as, as well. So we're in curriculum development for a comprehension course, for our own comprehension course, for yeah. a math curriculum. Uh, 25% of the people call us for math, not just reading. But this is a, uh, it's a very scripted program. So what we what we do is we try to find the right talent. We're like we're recruiters, right? So okay. we go out, and we recruit the talent, the people who have the great attitude, who have just a, a great disposition about them, and who have a great need. And then we say, hey, listen, we want to we want to hire you for this position. Yeah. And they can it's it's all through Zoom, you know. So we we do screen sharing operate, uh, you know, screen sharing applications. We then the the student is clicking and dragging, highlighting, underlining, zooming in, doing all these things, moving tiles. And so it, it works well for the tutor. It works well for the parent. Yeah. The student learns. Everybody wins. We're able to accumulate more money, right? Because it's all about the money. Right. And then we're able to, and then we're able to give generously with that, you know, as well. So yeah. for us, this is just one of the methods that we've chosen to use. And probably, I would say probably thus far, one of our most successful methods in terms of actually employing people. Uh, to do work, but they're Christian workers, right? They're Christian workers, right. you know, and, uh, and I, and I have to be very careful about that apparently, you know, but at the same <laughs> time, we, it, for the same time we do the recruiting yeah, and we're, we're, we're not hiring, we're recruiting. So mm-hmm. there's not like a help wanted sign out there. You know, we have people, I have 10 people call us a day, say, uh, you know, t- 10 people, they call us and say, Hey, are you hiring? I say, you know, we, we all, we only recruit you know, yeah. our, our people, we don't have any help wanted. There's no positions available. We're always hiring great talent, Yeah, but we just, we, but we don't, but we don't recruit, the, but we don't hire the same way, you know? And, mm-hmm. and so our, our heart really is, uh, is to just, to just love on these Christian workers. I tell people where we are like the Chick-fil-A of online programs. And we're, we're one of the largest great. in the country, one wow. of the largest in the country. And, uh, and we're up, we're up uh, uh, almost a thousand percent from where we were last year. Wow. Almost a thousand percent revenue. Wow. That's yeah, amazing. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And it's unbelievable. It's, it's God. Yeah. It's God. Only God does this. Right. And so wow, that's, that's one good. of the companies okay. that we, that we really, uh, we really enjoy working with. It's, it's kind of our, our, it's, it's our, it's our main thrust, I would say during uh, certain times of year. Yeah. You know, this is, this is one of those times of year. Yeah. We've got generous Joe's. This is the other one that the booth that you all were at. Yeah. Uh, talk about Generous Joe's and, and what you guys are doing there. Yeah. So the, the, the impetus of Generous Joe's was to create money. Literally. Is it about the money? <laughs> well, it sure isn't about the coffee. I mean, I like coffee, bro, but <laughs> yeah. you know, I want stacks of dollars that I can, that I can hand out to people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so for us, this is the way that we just created the funds because I, I tell people, I say, when the music stops, everybody's got to find a chair. 
Mm-hmm. And we can, we can give everything away and then we're done. But this is how we just kind of keep that cycle of, you know, uh, philanthropy, just kind of the wheels turning, right? We just got to yeah. keep putting money into the bucket and then figure out who we're going to dispense that, that bucket of funds to and when we're going to do that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this is, this is, I don't want to say the pride and joy, but you know, this is kind of a long-term, our heart for supporting people who are like-minded. Yeah. No, that, and that's, and that's what struck me. I mean, you've got, you know, who, who we are pro-life, protecting life of the unborn, pro-Israel, pro-family, pro-military, pro-law enforcement, uh, people, support people, projects, policies. And, and, and that's, and that's something, again, I want to instill in people listening and people might already agree with me who watch this channel and listen, whatever, but your pastor, your mom, your friend, whatever, who still think things are neutral, who still think, you know, Procter and Gamble or, or Heinz Kraft or, you know, Unilever or some of these massive yeah. food companies, these are all food companies, Nestle, all these people hate us. <laughs> they don't, they, at least, at least they hate, they hate our, they hate our uh, worldview and our policy. They're going to take our money just like you'd ha- happily take, you know, an That's atheist right. money or, or, That's or right. a radical Marxist money or something like that for a cup of coffee. And you're going to use that money and say, we're going to support pregnancy center. We're going to support a mom That's who right. needs, who, 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 you know, horrible situation, you know, comes, gets pregnant, et cetera, et cetera. Or, you know, we're going to say, no, we need law and order. We need to have law enforcement. We need to have military, not, you know, domineering, but God has laws and rules and he has the sword uh, for Roman 13, right? You're a mis- minister, a deacon to protect, to serve uh, the greater good, as it were. And, you know, we don't, nobody wants chaos. Nobody, except that's for the right. very, very top upper echelon of people, you know, the tiny, tiny fraction. Mm-hmm. And I think personally, yeah. that's where we see so much division. You know, they want us to think that men can't have babies. Actually, men can have babies, you know, because it's a trans man. And it's like, you can't that's say right. anything about abortion because you're a man. But if you're a trans man, you're really a woman, but you're this, you can't. And it's like, wait. And we argue, you know, in the church and the culture and the Democratic Republican parties, and all it is is dividing. And if we're divided, we're not unified and we're not seeing clearly. And with that, there's a lot of money that uh, gets exchanged. I mean, just BLM, Black Lives Matter, you know, hundreds of uh, thousands, if not, I think it's millions of dollars. I don't know if you saw this recently, where all that stuff kind of came up, how much money yeah. they took in. And so much That's of it was right. spent on escorts, strip clubs, sex chat rooms, all this yep. stuff. And you go to these places, even where George Floyd was murdered or where I'm in Louisville or was in Louisville, Breonna Taylor, are these neighborhoods better? Are these people with more melanin in this community better than they were a couple years ago? No, they're worse. It's actually riots galore through all the big cities. And it's like, and these people are taking your money, even probably some Christians. Oh, I want to support, you know, racism. Okay, that's bad. That's bad. I want to support this group. And it's like, but you're not even supporting those things. You're, you're, it's just a, they're charlatans, right? And they're, it's a money laundering front, basically. (laughs) Uh, <laughs> yeah. And so, so talk a little bit more about Generous Joe's. If somebody were to go here, shopgenerousjoe's.com, I'd encourage sure. everybody to go there. Uh, you can get it. It's, it's a coffee subscription, correct? Yeah, you can do either or. You know, okay. our coffee subscription is a kind of that faithful base of people who really support us. But we have people who just buy singles or five pounds or whatever, one off. We, we have that happen, you know, yeah. frequently. But but I think the base is what we're trying to do. Because again, in terms of in terms of uh, planning your giving, mm-hmm. we're trying to create a system to actually capture the cash and then find ways to disperse it on a um, you know, kind of like on a, on a timeline, if you will. You know what I'm saying? Where it's not just sporadic. And right now, sure. that's what it is. It's semi-sporadic. Okay. Now, over the next few years, Lord willing. Uh, we'll have enough base where it's like, hey, we support these ministries and we're able to give on a on a continual basis mm-hmm. to X, Y, Z ministry just because, well, w- when I was down in, um, in uh, boy, where was that? At the Conservative Baptist Network with, okay. and, and Me- Memphis, one, yeah. yeah, in Memphis, there you go. And when I was in Memphis, I was at another event and uh, up until recently, we supported him for $500 a month, every month for, yeah. you know, almost a year, more, more than a year probably. And, uh, you know, I just love the guy. And honestly, he's done probably more for me than, than anybody, but we're able to support him. This, this was Chris Hughes, okay. Chris Hughes. Okay. Uh, did, did you meet him at all or no? I don't think so. No, I don't believe so. I'll tell you one, one of the greatest guys I think on the planet. I just, I love this guy with, you know, with all my heart. I'm just a super, super guy. Yeah. And he's always bragging about us and he's always trying to promote us. And, 
And so we were there for him. But so our, our hope, our hope is to the more subscriptions we get, the bigger the pot comes, the more we can just kind of keep continually dispensing that uh, those resources, you know, kind of indefinitely, really. You know, what I mean, yeah. again, we're, this is just how we keep the music going. Yeah. Um, dollar for dollar. It's probably on this website, sir. People, people can check it out. Shop generous Um And then the other website, of course, is growth reading center.com as well. Uh, yeah. But for generous Joe specifically, I forget the ratio. You know it. If somebody buys a subscription, they do coffee subscription. I like medium sure. roast. Sounds good. And give Amen. give me one every two weeks. How much of that fourteen ninety nine dollars uh, per bag is going into just giving that money back to pro-life causes uh, and, and other just pro other work, other gospel, Christian, normal, common sense uh, work? Yeah. Yeah. So, OK, this is kind of the fun part. So when we started last year, we put one hundred and twenty thousand dollars into the company. So it was out of our family pocket. We reached into our pocket. Yeah. We laid out money for X, Y, Z. Right. So branding, coffee, uh, bags, all the I mean, see all this stuff. Right. One hundred twenty grand. And that's the, the travel going to and from events to try to write checks. We put one hundred twenty yeah. grand in. Wow. I think I reimbursed myself maybe 20 grand. So. The company technically still owes our family a hundred thousand, but mm-hmm. we don't really care about that. We don't. Yeah. We really don't care about that. But on top of that, you usually usually you would want to pay that back before you start writing checks. But we said it's not how we're going to do it. We want to start writing checks. Yeah. So I think we probably gave away last year, uh, with with all of our giving, almost a hundred grand. Okay, so wow. that was that was forty forty five forty three to forty five thousand dollars to our church. And again, wow. that's just that's that's an aside. But wow. in addition to that, probably almost another almost another fifty grand worth of money we gave out. So we're mm-hmm. so generous shows owes me. <laughs> yeah. It's not about the money, but it's all right. about the money, right? Because not about the money, keep, but it is. is. Yeah, but it is. This is it's the axiom of what we're doing, right? Yeah. So we're able to. So what what you're asking is how much per bag? Yeah. The reality that, is that's what people. The, the reality is is. Uh, a few dollars, three, four dollars, four or five dollars. It really depends. Yeah. Some some organizations we gave away a hundred percent, but it was really more than a hundred percent because they didn't pick up the cost of the travel, the fuel, mm-hmm. the hotels. So if we go to an event and we sell, like literally we drive to an event, there's probably on that on that bag of coffee, there's probably about a four dollar, four dollar and sixty cent margin okay. of, of value. So if I go out to an event and I sell a hundred bags. Technically, there's four hundred and sixty dollars worth of margin, right? Mm-hmm. I might travel to, again, just trying to build a picture here. Travel from Iowa to Mississippi, or to Memphis rather, to Memphis to do this event. Only sell fifty bags, but I give six thousand dollars over the course of a year. It, the numbers don't add up because it's God's right. money, and so technically, technically, we give way more than a hundred percent because we haven't. We haven't received even a portion of the, uh, you know, even a marginal portion of it back. Yeah. We like to tell people we will give you 90% of what we make at the event. Mm. You don't have to pick up the hotel. You don't have to pick up the fuel. You don't have to pick up the restaurant. We'll travel there on our dime Mm -hmm. and our dime. So we'll pay the hundreds of dollars for gas, hundreds of dollars for hotel. We'll pay for the coffee that's in the carafe. We'll pay for the cups, the sugar, everything like that. From one bag of coffee, there might be four dollars and sixty cents. Mm-hmm. We'll give you we'll give you ninety percent of the four dollars and sixty cents. So technically, maybe ninety percent of that, but really, it's more like if I was to back out all of those expenses, does that make sense? If I, was to I think back so. Out yeah, all yeah. The expenses, it would be like a negative. They would have to owe me money, you know. So, right, right, right. So, so yeah. you're so so somebody comes and gets a subscription every week, every two weeks, whatever. Uh, that each bag, they're basically buying from you all. At least a few dollars of what they're paying is going to pro Christian, pro something, yeah, yeah. pro Christian, pro law enforcement, pro. We gave out six thousand dollars of uh, six or eight thousand dollars worth of coffee just to coffee, uh, or just to just to uh, police stations around the Des Moines area. Okay, thousands wow. and thousands and thousands. Again, that comes out of our pocket. Does yeah. that make sense? So, yeah, yeah. and and that's that's the that's the kind of the neat thing about this. This provides money, but really the company still is in debt. And yet at the same time, we're still writing checks. So 
there's only one way to make that up. Number one is God. Number two is my family. And it's not me. People say, are you generous, Joe? I'm not generous, Joe. My kids, my kids have more generosity in their little finger than most people have in their entire, you know, being. It's just, they're so yeah. generous, so <laughs> generous. And so, and so is my wife. I mean, much more generous than I am. So here's what I'm saying is that yes, 90% will go, 50% will go, 100%, but oftentimes yeah. a lot more than that because we just keep writing checks out of our own pocket yeah. to keep giving to people. That makes sense. No, th- and that's great. I mean, I think that's something that, the other thing that I see, and I, I, I could be wrong because I'm, I'm only me. I'm not everybody else, of course. That'd be weird. But um, yeah, right. that a lot of people, kind of when you go into this space, right? You know, like yeah. I want to be generous. I want uh, our, our, our company's not just because everybody, nobody starts a company to make, to lose money, right? That's no doubt, right? You go to a job. You're not going there for free or paying. That would be like slavery, right? Like I work for you, this whole big economy of this massive amounts of trillions of dollars that is exchanged and you know, all these different industries and everything like that. Uh, nobody works for free, right? And nobody is certainly generally paying for something unless they're going to get something out of it, You know, maybe an internship or something. So for when people enter this sphere, though, like what you guys are doing, hey, this yeah. is a separate thing. It's not my main thing. Uh, my yeah. name happens to be Joe, generous Joe, Joe, cup of Joe, right? Uh, people get, and I could be wrong, but I think they're, I think I am right. Uh, that people get more critical, like, Oh, Absolutely do. So how much money is really going? Are you really lying? Cause it's like, well, Starbucks isn't giving any money to any pro-life causes, right? Coffee yeah. bean on the West coast there. Many people know it probably same thing. Uh, you know, you name it, go down the list. Folgers probably zoned by some of these big giant conglomerates. Yeah. Uh, Unilever, yep. or whoever, right? Some of these, there's only a few companies. I love those like pie charts you see, and there's, you know, kind of all these graphs outward. Yeah. And there's only a handful of really, really big companies in the world that really yeah. own those things. And they don't, they're not critical of Starbucks. They might still go there and roll their eyes and, okay, you know, pride or whatever. Okay, fine. Give me my Frappuccino mm-hmm. and leave. But as soon as you kind of enter this, this sphere. That's right. You you get this too? Do you? Do you I, oh, dude, what is dude, your answer I, to those to those? Yeah, dude, like you're just you're just using this. Da, 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 da. What do you got? You know what? I don't care about them. I, I don't have time. <laughs> I don't have time. I don't have time to Amen. deal with that neg- that negativity. Yeah. Okay. You know what? Here's the thing. I did a post the other day. I had, I had one of the, one of my haters say, uh, <laughs> you know, something about you know giving, and I said, you know, shut up. When you give, when you give more than you make, you come talk to me, and then you, you know you let me know. Yeah. I, I, you know, here's the thing. You tell you t- you 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 say publicly. I'm willing to show you my tax returns. Yeah. Look at the tax returns. Look at the tax returns. Look how much I made versus how much I gave. Yeah. And and uh, you say, well, I, can, I mean, I'll show you. I could pull up right now. I gave forty three thousand dollars to my church last year on one giving statement. That's just my giving statement. Wow. You know how much money I made last year? Zero dollars. Zero dollars. I mean, honestly, it's like. How did we do that? Yeah. Not to mention we put $120,000 into generous Joe's. Mm-hmm. So you say, you say to people, you give almost, I almost gave almost, uh, you know, over 90 grand last year. They wow. say, they say, Oh, he's bragging about his giving. He's bragging about his giving. <laughs> right, right, you know, right. But then if you, but then if you don't, you say can't anything, win either way. Yeah. Then if you, that's right. I don't care about those. You yeah. know? Then it's like, well, if you don't say anything, it's like, he doesn't even show his tax returns. And then if you showed him his tax returns, they, you know, what were they going to do? You know, it's like, yeah. he's bragging. It's like, whatever, dude, I don't have time for that negativity. Well, it's just, I mean, it's just, it's just like Christ, you know, I mean, John is, is, you know, the Baptist is not eating or drinking, right? He's out in the wilderness doing his John the Baptist, the prophet thing. And then Jesus is eating and drinking and they condemn both, right? The, the, yeah. the elites, the Pharisees, they condemn both. You know, Jesus is a drunkard and a, a, a and a friend of sinners, whereas John isn't, but he's, you know, I'm paraphrasing, completely forgetting the whole get it. verse, but yeah. you know what I mean? Like it doesn't matter. And people do this politically all the time. Um, That's right. And we won't and you know, here's, all that, but it's just like, here's, here, guys, here's something. On. Yeah. Here's something too. You know what? And we've, we've decided this a long time ago, my wife and I, and uh, we, if, if they, if they cannot, if they can't find something to, to discredit you, mm-hmm. they're just going to lie about you. Yeah. I mean, that's all it is. Yeah. So sometimes, true. whatever, dude, I got yeah. better things to do with my time. I'm going to keep writing checks. I'm going <laughs> to keep attending events. I'm going to keep hiring students. And I'm going to keep winning because our family is a family of winners. That's what we do. We win. We win all the time. We win all the time. 
all the time. Yeah. Matter of fact, I, I'm not sure of the last time that we actually as a family lost. Mm. And I'm not trying to brag. I'm just saying God has given us a measure of success in our life. So at some point, it's like, I don't care what you, whatever, dude, yeah. those naysayers, all they do is create negative energy. And I don't mean to be philosophical here, but the bottom line is negativity breeds negativity yeah. and success breeds success. And I want to surround my people or surround my people, surround my, my, and my people. Yeah. I want to surround myself and my people with people who are uplifting and encouraging and, and are winners too. You know, yeah. Dude, there's negatives. There's, you know, every liberal out there can try to, you know, the, the liberals and the, and the wokes and the cancel culture, all those folks, they pick apart the character of those people who have high character because yeah. character matters to them. Yeah. But if those people with high character pick apart the other, the other side, it doesn't matter because they don't care. Right. So at some point you got to say, dude, let them say what they want. I mean, I'm still going to write checks. And yeah. no matter what I do, no matter what I say, I, I can't win with them because if they, if they can't, if they can't find something, they'll make it up. Yeah. Whatever. No. And that's, and that's a really good point. I mean, again, we, we could talk, politics as far as how that happens and has been happening yeah. since you know 2016 probably before that for sure but That's most right. recently with you know trump and biden and hillary and obama and this yeah. and that and all these all these people uh, but you know we don't need to go through there because people already hear it all the time so um yeah. what is there anything else you want to add as far as just overall um how people can i mean obviously growth reading center i'll pull up the websites one more time uh, growthreadingcenter.com and then uh it's this shop generous joes or generous joes right it just kind of does it turn to yeah it's it's shop generous joes.org or generous joes uh uh or yeah it's shop generous dot dot com or well they both go to the same place if you right, go to right. if you go to if you go to generous joes.com you'll get some uh i think a a Philly shop out in some other state or something. It's like a sandwich shop. Right? Yeah. Generous show, generous shows.org is, and then it kind of takes you to, there's a shopping, like a separate, I see. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah through shop. But yeah, here's what I would say. I would say this, I would say that we're, we're going to enter a time and I think we are right now. And, uh, I'm not, I'm not worried about China or Russia. I'm not worried about Iran. You know who I'm worried about? I'm worried about our country. Because whether you know, a house divided against itself cannot stand. Mm -hmm. And so, what's going to happen is, is if I was China and Russia, I'd just say like, dude, don't worry about them. They're going to destroy themselves. Well, their yeah. country. We could talk all this. I got my theories. Their, but yeah. Oh, dude, their country will destroy <laughs> themselves. We will literally yeah. destroy ourselves. We're, we're we're eating ourselves from the inside. Yeah. It's one person pitting themselves against another. And honestly, whether it's it's a uh, whether that is artificially or synthetically kind of created in order to pit each other against themselves. I don't know, probably is, but I tell you what, we're, we're at, we're at kind of like a, a point in our life that if we don't start creating companies that are uh, parallel to that liberal woke kind of cancel culture uh, ideology, uh, we're just going to be at their mercy. Yeah. And, and, uh, and honestly, whether it's generous Joe, you know, you mentioned this dime payment processing, you'd mentioned that. And which is interesting because we were actually thinking about creating our own payment processing system. Mm. It's, we were, it's like, Hey, listen, it's only going to run us a couple hundred grand, you know, to get started. What will, how long would it take? Take a couple of years, did some research, maybe 500 or a million out the door, but yeah. then we could just be a payment processor. We could be the PayPal, you know? Yeah. So it's, but, but at some point in time, we're at their mercy. If we don't start creating a, kind of that parallel type economy where we are servicing ourselves. I mean, I don't know, this is stream, uh, stream yard. I don't know anything about them, but I mean, who knows anything about them? Maybe they could cancel us too, you know, and now we yeah. don't have any video conferencing. I mean, right. at some point in time, you have to have people with some, some really strong uh, beliefs about our economy and about, about who we are as a culture based on Judeo Christian values and principles and, and how do we keep, you know, exalting God in all of this? And, and I think there needs to be more companies out there. Matter of fact, I, I've even talked to some friends of mine. Like, why isn't there like localized, uh, kind of like Craigslist or localized Facebook pages where you could go to and say, hey, man, I want a Christian to do my roofing. Yeah. I want I want a Christian to do my painting. I want a Christian to do my tutoring. I want a Christian to do, you know. I think some of that exists. List. I think there are some, some of it does. Things. Red Balloon uh, is a, a, it was a, at this conference, I was at Fight Left Feast recently. 
uh, down in Knoxville. And uh, yeah, he started about a year ago and he was, he was in, you know, higher up and he got fired because he was too conservative. He was at some big, you know, Fortune 500 type company in the HR department, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And he was like, I want to kill HR, <laughs> you know, and it was a really nice, yeah. friendly guy and, and they have job boards. And so I think some of that exists, but I, I get, I get what you're saying there. It's not ubiquitous within the church because there's so much faction and division and there's so many things like, well, he's this or she's that. Or, well, they're a denomination and, you know, whatever. And I think a lot of people, we are starting to overlook some of that, especially if you're on the younger side yeah. where you think, listen, uh, we're going to disagree about, you know, Romans 9 or Genesis 1 or something like that. You have your convictions. Great. You love Christ. Yes. Is he king? Yes. Is the scripture God's word? Yes. Is the family important? Is freedom important? Are yeah. these things, did God, does God give real responsibility? Does he tell us to proclaim the truth and live for him? Yes. All right, let's, let's shake hands, let's hug, whatever, and let's build yeah. and work and not be this kind of hovel hole, like sort of, you know, holy huddle, yeah. whatever, uh, and, and go and, you know, and s- said it a couple of times at the conference, go slay dragons, you know, go take That's these right. things out. And wh- why not, you know, David and Goliath you know, imagery sort of thing. So, anyway. yeah. No, that's good. Well, um, we got to we got to do what we can to support each other. And you know, yeah. not everybody at every company in corporate America is bad, right? Of course. I think I think that there's a lot of great people in those fields, yeah. and th- there are some companies that, while they're 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 not so dogmatically proclaiming a belief, but I think that as a Christian, we've kind of been quiet too long. Uh-huh. Because we're trying to be kind and we're kind to we're trying to turn the other cheek. Mm-hmm. But the Bible says that there is a a time to be silent and then there's a time to speak up. Mm-hmm. And I think if we're not speaking up now, there's gonna come a day when we can't speak any longer. Yeah. And so uh we, we have to do what we can, we have to be kind and civil, but at the same time we, we have to we have to build brands that are gonna honor the Lord and then share those brands with others that are gonna then support the people who we care about yeah yeah no that's really good uh where can people find you besides obviously the two websites you, you mentioned facebook you guys on uh, social media twitter all that yeah yeah we've got several several social media uh you know platform or uh facebook and i think i'm on instagram and i don't okay. do much on, on on twitter yeah uh, but we um yeah we're you know, I've got I think I have like eight email addresses, so I'm sure you can find an email address somehow. One of my assistants yeah. will grab it and let me know. But yeah, yeah. absolutely, man. We're uh, we're always here. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll co- coordinate, put some of those in the description down below sure, for everybody yeah. to check y'all out too. So, well, I appreciate the talk, Joe. I really do. Um, yeah, yeah. Definitely for the audience, go check out these two companies. Um, and you mentioned a few other things you're looking at doing in the future and really just you know, serving Christ, trying to be a good right. stu- steward of the money, uh, because it's something we all have to have, right? We all eat, we all have to go to the bathroom, we all have to sleep, we all have money. Like there's certain things, it's like, these are basic human things that we yep. currently have, God uses, and we can either do them well, you know, we can use the hammer well, or we can use the hammer poorly. You know, it's just a tool like yeah. anything else. So uh, I appreciate yeah. the conversation, Joe. Uh, you all yeah, have a great day, okay? Okay, thanks so much, buddy. God bless.